Hello, my name is Katja Weisel. I'm from the University Medical Center in Hamburg-Eppendorf in Hamburg in Germany. And I'm happy to be here at the ESCO uh, 2023 in Chicago. And I presented in behalf of my co-authors here the results of an international uh, phase three um, approval um, trial, the DREAM3 trial. and. Uh, the TREAM3 trial is designed for patients with relapsed multiple myeloma disease who had at least two prior treatment lines. And it compared in a randomized fashion uh, the monotherapy with the antibody drug conjugate, Belantamab mafodotin, or we call it Belamav, um, which is against BCMA directed, um, against uh, the standard of care with pomalidomide and dexamethasone, which is widely approved for treatment of relapsed myeloma all over the world. So we had kind of a head-to-head -head comparison of two totally different um, drugs or regimens um, for relapsed myeloma disease. Uh, the a trial included uh, 325 patients, and there was a two-to-one randomization so that uh, two-thirds of the patients received bel mafodotin, which was applicated in a half an hour infusion every three weeks. No dexamethasone added, nothing added, so pure monotherapy. And one third of the patients were assigned to pomalidomide and dexamethasone in the well-known four cycle, um, four week cycle regimen. And the primary endpoint of this trial was progression-free survival. So as in the most myeloma uh, trials, the primary endpoint is. Secondary endpoints were overall survival, also um, life quality and others. Um, the presentation yesterday focused on the presentation of the primary endpoint. Let's look first about the patients uh, who were included into the trial. Um, the median age was 68. Uh, overall, a bit an elderly population than in other trials investigating immunotherapies against BCMA. And uh, we had about 20% triple refractory patients, so patients who were refractory to at least one proteasome inhibitor, one immunomodulatory agent, and a monoclonal anti-CD38 antibody. Um, the primary endpoint analysis showed uh, that the median progression-free survival was longer for ba balantamab mafodotin with 11.2 months compared to 7.0 with pomalidomide and dexamethasone. However, as you probably heard, uh, the trial did not reach statistical significance, and in fact, uh, the drug was uh, taken off the market in the U.S. after the results uh, were pub uh, published. Um, so why did that happen uh, when there was more than a four-month benefit in progression-free survival? This happened because the uh, Kaplan-Meier curves were crossing after four months. And so that uh, we had more early progressions on the monotherapy compared to pomalidomide dexamethasone as a doublet. And especially the dexamethasone might here lead to an initial a bit greater disease control. However, after crossing, uh, the Balamov arm stayed superior and stably superior to POMDEX. So that with the longer follow-up, the trial might gain again statistical significance. However, currently we could not see that. But there is a unique feature of a balantamab mafodotin, which is um, the immunogenic effects of the drug. And uh, that is reflected in the duration of response. Patients who responded to balantamab mafodotin um, had a very long-lasting durability of the response, and the median duration of response was not reached at the time of analysis, and here we had a very clear separation of the curves. In overall survival, there was not a mature analysis, but there was similar, were similar results between both arms. 
Regarding side effects, uh, we know that Belantamab mafodotin can do a distinct ocular toxicity. However, we also know that this is um, reversible. Uh, uh, bilateral worsening in visual acuity occurred in some patients, but only in two patients in a severe manner. The median time that this happens is about two months after initiation of treatment, and it's then after about four to six weeks, again, reversible. However, uh, comparing the toxicity of both regimens, we saw that Balamaf uh, led to a lower rate of neutropenia, especially severe neutropenia, and we had a very low rate of infections. The grade three, four infection rate was 13% and about half of, of in the POMDEX arm. Regarding the patient reported outcomes, we saw that in both arms, about 70% of patients felt not bothered by the treatment. And we had an improvement in global health status in both treatment arms, especially at later time points. Balamaf was superior to pomalidomide and dexamethasone in regards of fatigue. There was um, a more favorable development um, than in the POMDAX arm. So what can we draw as conclusions out of this trial? We see overall we have unfortunately a negative study. However, we see that a monotherapy without dexamethasone is at least as effective as a dexamethasone-containing doublet. And it's the only NEBCMA-directed agent currently on the market, um, which is broadly available, which has no limitations in availability, as CAR T cells do have, or also the bispecific antibodies. And we have a favorable safety profile as we also learn to deal with the ocular toxicity now, knowing that it's reversible, that there is a eye protection possible. We see that we, not enough patients are responding to Bellamuff initially. This was the reason for the steep and early drop of the kaplan meier curve. So it should be our goal to figure out how to make the rug more effective from the beginning, and that might be combinations. And there are a few combination studies underway, for example, DREAM7 and DREAM8, where we expect a readout in the next year. So that I hope that we learn with all those trials where the drug really fits in for you as patients, um, and who most benefit from Balantamat Mafodotin, which is still an important gain in our treatment armamentarium um, in, an, in a global view.